Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season and a terrific new year. Today we're filming just a short video. Uh, in fact, Dana's not even here yet. I haven't told her about it. Uh, we want to make a run to our welding supplier, and I happen to have a MIG cylinder that has maybe 400 PSI worth of gas left in it. So I figured it's just enough to maybe bang out a welding project I've been wanting to do for a while. Plus, I might as well use up all the gas that's in the tank. I paid for it. So, let's get started and I'll show you what I'm up to. This is the skeleton of a handicap ramp. My father made this a while back when my grandfather had gotten one of those motorized wheelchairs. And it is pretty long. Uh, there's a lot of steel in this. So what I'm going to do is recycle it and turn it into a stand that will hold all four of our bench grinders. Because right now, I've got one bench grinder sitting out on Dana's desk. I've got another bench grinder tucked in there under that blue tub. I've got one bench grinder hanging out on my workbench, and there's one sitting in the cabinet in the corner over there. So I figure I have just enough welding gas left to make this stand, and that's what I'm going to do. It's going to make things a heck of a lot easier for me around the shop. All right, this is going to be a little loud, so remember guys, wear your eyes and ears. Right, guys this is basically the frame for the top of the table it's nothing more than an eye made up of my three pieces I've got a bar clamp holding it together uh, I'm gonna do my tack welds and then I'm gonna run my final welds right over them um, if I happen to run out of shielding gas I do have my other MIG set up with flux core wire uh, right now on the Miller I've got <laughs> less than 50 uh, PSI showing on the tank pressure but the working gauge still says I have uh, 30 cubic feet per hour, so until that starts to drop, I should be able to get myself a decent weld. So, let's kick this thing off and see what I can come up with. Alright YouTube, well the inevitable happened, and I actually have the opportunity to show you something I've never shown you before. What shielding gas actually does in reference to how the weld puddle flows and how the weld puddle is protected. Now this bead right here, I had a nice supply of shielding gas, and it was getting proper coverage. And I want to show you what will happen with the same exact machine, the same exact settings, and everything virtually identical and the only difference is there was absolutely no shielding gas flowing when that weld was made it looks absolutely horrendous now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind that out I'm gonna get my uh, flux core wire in the machine and finish up this project but you can really see the difference let me see if I can back out here I know they're not quite on the same plane but I mean you gotta figure that those are from the same exact setting same machine everything and it's night and day so, yes, your shielding gas supply is important. Well, YouTubers, until I get some shielding gas, it's time to wave bye-bye to the modern conveniences of digital readouts and all the fancy bells and whistles of the Miller. And it's time to fire up the beast. Now, this is an old Hobart MIG. It's, uh, it's almost as old as I am. My father got it when I was around five years old. And this is the machine I learned how to MIG weld on. Um, this is the machine that... Uh, you know, kind of lit my fire for welding and got me interested in metalworking. Now, it's an awesome machine, and I still do use it on a regular basis. In fact, I do keep the flux core loaded in it in case I have to weld outside or do something in the driveway. Now, you might wonder, why the heck do we have two MIGs in this shop? Well, the simple answer is, my father gave me the Hobart, and he went out and bought the Millermatic 251 for himself. So basically, he wanted an upgrade. 
But between the two machines, if you know how to set them right, these machines are both very good powerhouses. I mean, they will plow through just about anything. Never had a problem with either of them. The only thing I ever had to replace on it was the torch. And after 20 years of service, I think the old torch pretty much deserved a retirement. my little flux core weld. I probably don't have the machine set exactly right for this, uh, this thickness of material. You can see some spatter, but that'll all clean up nice. But it's a heck of a lot better than welding without shielding gas. Alright guys, I got the first coat of paint on this thing. I got my uh, my tabletop mounted. I'll explain what that little pulls for later. But uh, I reinforced the base a little bit more. Um, this material flexed a little bit uh, more than I liked and I really want to have a nice stable work surface when I put the bench grinders on. And as you can see, I put on some uh, little feet that kind of level. It's just uh, nothing special. It's a bolt with a couple of nuts and some rubber stops and they make some pretty decent feet. Now the wheels, when uh, I want to move this thing around, basically I'm just going to tip it back onto the wheels as if it were a hand truck and I'll be able to move this thing around the shop relatively easily. So the next stop for this project is to uh, have a power strip affixed to the pole uh, right there on the bottom and I'm going to actually wire on some new plugs on the older bench grinders because uh, well, you know, you got electrical tape and all sorts of other stuff. I mean, I think my grandfather put plugs on these machines probably, uh, oh, God, at least 15, 20 years ago. Uh, the only one I don't need to mess with is my brother-in-law's because that's a nice, shiny new DeWalt. But uh, So let me get some wiring done, and I'll show you where I am from there. All right, guys, here we are. As you can see, I wire-tied a power strip to uh, the base. And uh, this power strip is actually a really old one. I bought this thing at Radio Shack years ago. It's got uh, a metal exterior. Uh, the only thing that's plastic on it are the outlet uh, faces themselves. Everything else is metal, which I really, really like. It's a really durable power strip. 
Uh, those are the two new plugs on top for the old grinders that I just wired in. Um, got my wiring about as neat as I could with the, the space allowed. And on top, as you can see, I've got my bench grinders all set up. Now originally I was thinking about doing four bench grinders on this, but uh, I opted not to simply because it was just starting to become a little bit awkward to move. Um, it still is awkward, but uh, at least I won't be moving it around too much. This is just basically to get it out of the way if we have to bring cars in here. So I've got the two grinders back to back, and I'm going to have the wire wheels on the inside and the stone wheels on the outside. So if I have to grind something, I have a pretty good range of motion. I've got to set those up. And i got my brother-in-law sitting out here up front. Now the pole in the center that I put in, uh, this is actually to do two things. One, I mounted a gooseneck light to it, and I can swivel that light around to any one of the three grinders. So I can back out a little. And um, the other purpose is as you're using it like a hand truck, you grab it by the center pole, and that's your top handle, so you can kind of move it around and maneuver it. Uh, grabbing it by the table is just kind of awkward, so it serves two purposes. And that's pretty much it. Well, there you have it, YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this little build. I know I did, and it's definitely going to save me a lot of time in the future. Uh, not having to hunt down different wheels and things for my bench grinders and seat clamps and you know, strapping them to tables and whatnot. It's, uh, it's going to be really nice having them all in one place fixed to a solid work surface. Uh, it's just going to save me a lot of time. Um, let see, what else? Well, I've got to take the cylinder off the make, put the cap on it, and get it ready to be transported. A uh, couple of minutes I have to leave here to go pick up Dana, so I have a few things I need to get done. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video here, and I want to thank all the new subscribers for joining us. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for hanging out and taking the time to watch all the stuff on our channel. And uh, we'll be bringing you more stuff pretty soon. Until then, take care. This is Jeff at Darkman Metals.